So we've already entered our setup screen. Just to recap, we've pressed the down arrow and the uh, alarm uh, silence button at the same time, and that's brought us through to here. We've come to our settings and alarms, and that's where we want to get into, so I'm using the select button in order to access that. So dual prescription is off, exactly the same as the CPAP. We're now coming down to our mode because we're wanting to set BiPAP or spontaneous uh, timed mode. We now need to make sure that this says ST. If it doesn't, again, you need to select the modify and use your navigation key until you have the ST mode showing there. Circuit type, as before, is passive. AVAPS, as before, is off. But the difference now is that because we're in a biphasic um, setting, we need to now set two parameters. So what we're now instructing the machine is, is that we want to have an inspiratory peak in pre airway pressure, which is this IPAP, and we also want to have an end peak uh, airway pressure, which is our EPAP. Um, and the difference is now that we are now uh, not only providing the patient with an end expiratory pressure, which will help to keep their alveoli open and will um, enable more uh, gas exchange to happen in the alveoli, but we are also providing the patient with some pressure support when we're using um, the BiPAP mode or the spontaneous time mode. So that means on every single breath that that patient takes in, the machine is assisting that patient to get the best tidal volume that they possibly can. So we're augmenting a patient's tidal volume as well as augmenting their ability to perform gas diffusion in their alveoli. So, IPAP. If this is uh, for a non-COVID patient, then we refer to the rule box policy uh, and the starting pressures for patients would be to have an IPAP setting of 10 centimetres of water. So I'm happy with that. I do not need to modify this setting. Our EPAP, again, according to policy, to start at an EPAP of four centimetres of water. So again, I do not need to modify this. Breath rate. So this is a new setting that we need to set, unlike CPAP. So what we're saying here is that should the patient, the machine not uh, sense that the patient is initiating any spontaneous breaths of their own, that you would like the machine to deliver what we call a mandated breath and how many of those in a minute would you like the machine to deliver? So the safest setting for every patient here would be to have a minimum of 10 breaths per minute. That's the minimum that we would like the patient to have mandated should they not be spontaneously breathing at all. If the patient is maybe taking four breaths per minute, the machine will still recognize that and it will still also offer some mandated breaths up to a total of 10 breaths per minute, so it will, it will work out how many spontaneous breaths the patient is taking as well. So the next thing that we have is the inspiratory time. Now this is just the time that the machine will deliver the difference between your EPAP setting and your IPAP setting, which is known as your pressure support. Um, and for most patients, an initial setting of two seconds is exactly where we want to be. This may need to be titrated against your patient's need, but that would be uh, a doctor's um, or critical care outreach will be the ones who are advising on how to manipulate that parameter. So now we're down to our fraction of inspired oxygen. As before, you set exactly the percentage of oxygen that you need that patient to be receiving. Trigger type, this needs to be auto track. So the auto track function is essentially a sensory function that the Trilogy machine can do to tell you what the patient is actually um, achieving. So not only when we have this on the patient will we see what we've set, but it will also show you what the patient is actually achieving. And then some of the alarm settings will help you to identify when your patient maybe isn't achieving what you want them to do. So that needs to be set to auto track this trigger type. 
Next one down is the rise time. So again, please don't worry too much about this. This is a setting uh, that can be set from one to six. So when you're initially setting up, just set it up on number three, right in the middle. And again, this is something around if your patient is not quite achieving the inspired um, peak airway pressure that you have set for them, uh, you may have some of the more specialist clinicians will come and will titrate that in order to try and help the machine to help the patient achieve those settings. Um, but set it on three for setting um, up the patient initially. Ramp length. So this is the setting that enables your machine to say, okay, you want me to achieve these settings on the patient. How long do you want me to incrementally increase the pressure settings within here and the support that I'm delivering to your patient um, in order to, for you to be able to get much better patient compliance on the initial setup? So again, exactly the same as CPAP. I would suggest the longer time that you can give the patient to achieve those uh, maximum settings, the better. So um, ideally, if you can, give them 30 minutes and please modify it to 30 minutes. Um, but that will be very dependent on your patient-specific scenario. Uh, ramp start pressure, exactly the same principles as before. It needs to be either at the same setting as your EPAP or slightly below in order that the machine can um, titrate up uh, accordingly. Uh, and then we're down to nebulizer enabled. Again, unless you're working in AMU where you have the nebulizer attached, uh, this needs to be set at unavailable. Uh, the circuit disconnect alarm, again, that needs to be uh, set at a, a maximum of 20 seconds, no more than that. Um, apnea alarm, again, 20 seconds as before, and the same with the apnea rate now. So the key thing when we're in the spontaneous timed or BiPAP mode is that this apnea rate needs to be set at the same or below what your backup rate is, because otherwise the machine will think that the patient is not breathing at all and will start delivering apnea breath rate uh, to the patient. So make sure that is set. Ours was set at 10, so I'm happy with that apnea rate set there at 10. Again, as before, for the purposes of now, simplify things and remove your uh, volume alarms, just turn them off. Um, and for the purposes of this demonstration, I've actually just turned off the high and low respiratory alarms as well. So now I'm happy that I have set up the parameters on the machine. We now want to put the machine into standby mode so that we can now take this to the patient's bed space and have it ready to then connect to the patient's face mask once we've completed mask fitting. So I now just press finish, it says activate. So uh, yes, I do want to activate that mode. It is now ready.